we are live. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Um, I have no idea whether you can actually hear this properly. Apparently, we are live. No, it's super. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Um, I have no idea Make whether you can actually hear this properly. Apparently, we are live. No, it's super. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> I have no idea Make whether you can actually hear this um, properly. As you may be able to tell from this, I am very much a newbie at what we go for, at streaming. As you may be able to tell from this, I am very much a newbie. But uh, anyway, we'll see how this goes. If my phone starts fuzzing uncontrollably, it's probably someone to tell us that this is not working. Um, but we're going to hope for the best. We're going to play, and uh, we'll, we'll enjoy ourselves. Whether you can hear us properly uh, is another another thing entirely. <laughs> no one's messaged me yet. Yeah. The phone has not gone off yet. Mm. Maybe I should have someone send me a message if it's all okay. Yeah, I think so. I think either way, but it's it's like the reverse of what you usually have to turn your phone off to play a concert. I, I, I want to keep my phone off. Yeah. Anyway, be disturbed. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this con salmo. Uh, take over, and um, we're going to start with one of Lewis's tunes. Lewis, do you want to tell us a bit, or tell our people about this? Sure, this, this, this is called Le Lula, and uh, it's a, a place in France, and I um, had the pleasure of going to New York and recording it with a, a few of my favourite musicians. Um, goodness, it was over a year ago now, and um, that CD came out, that rec recording came out in December, so yeah. kick off the concert with that. Hope you enjoy it. It was just a bit echoey, but stop doing what so whatever you did was fine. Okay. I, I, I don't know oh, what I know. Okay. Cool. We will see. <laughs> this is the, the hardest part. The playing is the easy part. Yeah. Anyway, let's go.
Thank you very much. Um, yeah, b beautiful tune there, uh, written by Lewis. But you recorded that, you did that on a recent album. Yeah. In a kind of different different format. Yeah, it was a really different feel to it. We had um, drums and bass, so obviously this instrumentation is wildly different. I'm kind of having to play a bit of a different role here, and you were kind of playing the role that I guess I was playing in the recording. So you, you cool. seem to just have every bass covered in the recording. Like, yeah, the rhythm parts at times and, yeah, comping yourself whilst you're... Oh, man, it's awesome. Yeah, well that's, it. that's the challenge of playing trio. It's one of the reasons I wanted to do a trio record, really, was, I mean, it, you know, playing with the guys that were on the record, they give you this kind of great supporting bass. Um, but then, yeah, kind of filling in and being more pianistic and having to cover, cover those bases, accompany yourself and that kind of thing. But that's, you know, playing this kind of stuff is, is a pretty ferocious training ground yeah. for that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I might give a bit, of, uh, as a bit of background as to how this ended up happening. Um, and it was a number of years ago. How long have we been playing together now? It must be over, yeah, about, about 10, 10 years, years yeah. if not just over. And um, I, ha I have a band and, and I asked Lewis if he would kindly come and join us for a concert. And as soon as he did, I mean, my jaw was on the floor. It was just incredible playing. Although I seem to remember, was our first performance was somewhere, it was an incredibly luxurious location in the Caribbean. However, they had one set of vibes that yeah. I seem to remember were quite... They were low, yeah. And the, the bars were quite thin as well. Yeah, it's quite often when you, when you get to, I mean, somewhere, you know, like an island, you can't, pick it, you can't really ship a, an instrument there. And I think it belongs to the police band. And it's very common to find sets of vibes that aren't, you know, you don't have all the mod tongs, you lose the height adjustability. And for me, I'm not incredibly tall, but six foot, you know, you, and also you just kind of get used to it being a certain height. But as soon as it's lower down, it's, you Play just feel like, what am I doing here? And yeah, everything's smaller. So it's, it's like, I don't know what the equivalent is. If your keys were closer together or something like that, it's just bewildering at first, but you kind of get used to it and you, you make do with what you have, I guess. But yeah, it was a fun, it was, it was a fun time and yeah since then we've played together quite a lot yeah. and more recently as well we've uh, we've experimented with this a bit more the, the duo yeah. side i think I, I mean i guess i would say this but i do think the sound of the clarinet and the vibes do work really well together i think so um yeah with all the instruments themselves they're just fantastic friends of course <laughs> anyway Absolutely. we'll talk about that in a in a little bit but we're now going to so I should I should have explained already how how tonight is going to the work how excuse me how tonight is going to work we got a bit of a selection of music for you uh, I'm going to play some classical but kind of a bit of Stravinsky and then a piece that's a little bit more uh, athletic shall we say uh, unlike myself um, I don't know how my neighbours will will feel about that but I'm sure I will find out tomorrow. Uh, and Lewis is going to play a couple of uh, pieces solo as well. And then it should be a, a nice mix. But anyway, now we're going to <laughs> really cross the, the two genres together, which is something I don't really like saying those, but you know, cross. anyway, uh, we're going to play a piece by Paganini. It was by Paganini, there's not much to tell you there. Really. <laughs> Do you want to start and I'll send away? Sure, yeah.
Oh, that's, that's really good. Really yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, now we're going to... Uh, I was watching that from my kitchen. <laughs> now we're going to do something... Well, I'm going to do something entirely different. I'm going to play a piece uh, by Stravinsky. I thought it would be nice to... Because hopefully there's hopefully there's lots of people watching and will end up watching this. So people that like jazz, like classical, like both. And this is quite a, this is a last movement from uh, three pieces for solo clarinet. And it's very, lots of accents. And he writes uh, at the beginning, forte from the very beginning until the very end. It's, uh, it's a fun one. I think it would be nice to hear a little bit about your instrument and why, why you picked it and yeah, yeah. What what do you like about this one in particular? This one in particular. Okay, so I mean, for me, sorry to put you on the spot. No, no, you're not, not at all. I mean, for me, the the awareness, you know, just realizing that this this instrument was a thing, just came through listening to my heroes, you know, so I'd growing up and learning to play bass and um, listening to, you know, Lionel Hampton and, and uh, Gary Burton and people, you know, people who played this instrument, I just knew from the get-go, you know, I was like, well, that's, that's my sound, that's the sound that I want to find myself through. So, um, yeah, and, and, you know, there, there, were, there were other people playing other sets of vibes, but for me, I, you know, as a kid, I just identified with that sound and also the look of the thing. I loved the gold as well. I had to get a gold <laughs> one when I was yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> preaching to the choir. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it looks great, it sounds great. The, the biggest thing for me was, um, you know, growing up in an era where it wasn't so much YouTube, it was CDs and this kind of, and, and tape even, and, and that kind of side of things. It was, it was just purely about the sound. And when I realized that this was the instrument that made the sound for those um, masters got the sound through. Um, yeah, that was, that was all I was interested in. I just wanted to play one of these. Yeah. Uh, all right, and why Mutter then? Well, th for that reason. Yeah. For, for, to, to play them, exactly. So that was why I didn't go for another, a different manufacturer. This was, uh, this was the dream, you know, this is like <laughs> the Rolls Royce of life. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it was. I just, yeah, I love the look of it and I love the sound of it, primarily. It was that it was um, finally getting my hands on one as well and realizing that you know that the sound was so three-dimensional in a way that a lot of other but I mean you've heard you know you would have tapped on other vibraphones and you know it, perhaps I guess I yeah, mean, yeah I no, certainly, yeah. I certainly yeah. have at some points and and it, I always keep coming back to this and th I mean this is my own set and I, I sort of have quite a strict wording you know whenever i go places i have to have this this instrument because it's a huge part of my sound and, and my kind of musical identity i suppose um yeah so, uh, for me it, it, it's superior in all ways in in tone and kind of practicality and its function just just the way it looks too yeah. um yeah it, it's it's also a projection of so much that's 
that's another thing that a lot of this web of friends struggle with is just to be heard and for me because i was playing a lot of jazz and with musicians that play drums and other like saxophones and really loud instruments even guitars electric guitars so i wanted to be heard which you know it doesn't matter how hard you hit or how good your technique is or how hard your mallets are sometimes if you're playing on an instrument it kind of just gets to a certain level and just kind yeah. of gives up um, and this was never the case with, with these you know they just they just project and project and they don't sacrifice the tone which sometimes it's you know tone can start sounding two-dimensional at mm-hmm. certain volume levels and, and these just kind of you know they bring out with the, with the little legs sorry to bring you on no, no, I was just interested and no. I thought it'd be nice for, for yeah. everyone to hear I mean, it's yeah. such a beautiful sound yeah it's such a you guys don't have to answer that. No, no. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to do a one of my favourite ballads. And a shameless plug here for you all. This is um, on an album that comes out tomorrow. Mm. So in not, not too long, you'll be able to get it uh, everywhere. Of the very originally named the Julian Bliss Septet. And for many years, we did a, a show based on the music of Benny Goodman, which was a huge amount of fun. Mm. And then we thought... What's, what's next? What's the next one? And through our many hours of being together, we all came up with Gershwin. And we thought, yeah, Gershwin, this, there's an endless amount almost, a seemingly endless amount of music there. Mm. And uh, this, yeah, this made it into that show. And uh, it's also on the album, which, uh, uh, well, the single is out now. So you can go and listen to it straight after this, if you are so inclined. Um, anyway, I'll stop talking now and we're going to play.
thank you um, to everyone. So it's, it's very weird, isn't it, to entertain to a camera? It's your living room. It's my living room, yeah. Man, you made me hold that note quite a long time at the end there. Eh? Mm, well held. Um, since, since I asked you a bit about your instrument, maybe I, I will say, before we play our last, our last tune, I think we're about, yeah, we've got a, another piece written by Lewis. Um, I should explain a little bit about my instrument and why, why I picked uh, LeBlanc, LeBlanc as it's properly pronounced, uh, so I'll get in trouble for that. It was, you know, I remember, you know these, these kind of trade shows where there's, there's lots of, lots of people, so many instruments, yeah. and I was, I was fairly young, I must have been, I think, 14, 15, mm. and I went to this, this big trade show in, in Frankfurt, at the Music Mecca, mm. and Con Selma had this huge stand, and I went in, and I, you know, being a kid, you're picking up all the instruments, you're trying them, and I picked up this one clarinet, it was a prototype, and I played it, and within minutes, I was like, I thought, I've got to have that, I, I want that one. And I ended up speaking to the, the people there, met everyone in, in charge. And I, I, I said, I, I want the clarinet. Well, you, you can't have it. It's a prototype. But I, but I really like it. I, I want to play it. And um, I, did, I did try. No, I didn't. I didn't try. It actually was awful. Um, but I, it was something about the sound and the, the, way, the ease of playing. Mm. And I, I always, after that, every LeBlanc clarinet I tried just, it felt so even throughout. You know, some mm. some instruments I feel it's very uneven sounds. There's some that stick out more, mm. but not in terms of dynamical ways, but in like in terms of timbre of, of sound, mm. darkness, muffled, and the blanc was always so so even mm. and so easy to play. Mm. And I always think, well, why work harder than you than you have to almost? But for me, it's like I finally, and this sounds really cliche, but I finally found that instrument that I, I didn't have to worry about this. I could just yeah. play the way I wanted to play. Yeah. And, you know, when you can you just pick a note out and you know exactly how it's going to speak before you even even go there. And yeah, it was, it was incredible. And then I got to, got to know the, the amazing, the awesome people there. And for, I think it's, I've now worked with them for coming up to almost 15 years, would you believe? It's yeah. kind of. I, I hate to think what I was like back then as a 15, 16 year old, just running around corporate office. But <laughs> and I've had this particular clarinet for a number of years and uh, it was kind of highly customised and when we finished it, much like you, I thought, well, I, I, I kind of like the gold. It's got to be gold. Mm. And uh, yeah, this, I, I love this, love this thing. Um, but there's some, there's some new things in the pipeline maybe. So, uh, but it's... Uh, it's nice to be involved and it's nice to be involved in such an awesome, awesome group of people. So, but yeah, I hope that was somewhat interesting for you. And now we're going to play, your, your, I'll let you introduce your, yeah, your, sure. your piece. This is a piece called For Wayne that I wrote for us to play. And um, yeah, it's, uh, Wayne Short is a very important musician, I think, for both of us. Um, you've, been, you've worked with him and he's written music for you and, yeah. and you have a, an ongoing... He's, with he's him. the nicest person. He's, amazing. he's yeah. such a. The stories he has are just yeah. mind blowing. He'll sit there and. Yeah, I, I could go on for ages about it, but I won't. Yeah, no, he's, a, he's a legend of, of this music, legend of music, full stop. You know, uh, an incredible improviser and band leader and, and sideman, you know, many years ago, silly, and, and just an incredible composer. You know, I think that's one of the things that really sets him apart for, for many of us that that play a lot of improvised music is that his his compositions are, are so varied and at such high level and and um, so interesting and yeah he's a real pioneer really and, and and just the sheer body of work that he's created is is truly amazing so yeah he's a real real huge influence for both of us i think so it felt right to to you know tip the hat to wayne and so for our last, our last tune, uh, do you want to take the first solo? Sure. Yeah. yeah.
Nice, thank you. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'd like to do another one at some point. Now that I've got over the stress of live streaming for the first time, that was, I think that was the most, the most stressful part. I'm not the saying, but setup, yeah. yeah, the setup yeah. all afternoon and setting up. Um, please stay tuned on the Conselma Instagram page because tomorrow evening at the same time, so that's 10 p.m. GMT, 5 p.m. Eastern and other time zones as well elsewhere, uh, we'll be doing a live Q&A um, mm. on Instagram, on the Conselma Instagram. So get your questions in ahead of time or you can just throw us in the deep end and ask us questions straight away. But uh, please do join us. It's uh, been a lot of fun and... Thank you all very much. Thank you.